Rock and roll has always had a rebellious streak. Was that you, sucker? You weren't f***ing married to him. I f***ing was. You don't f***ing fight at my show, you asshole. So it's not shocking that some of the genre's most famous artists have found themselves behind bars at some point. On the 15th, and he said, wouldn't happen to anybody. You'll be out soon? I think so. <laughs> Let's look back at 10 rock stars who spent time in jail. Shut up with this, stupid Joe Strummer frequently got into scuffles with police and security personnel, resulting in him being handcuffed several times due to physical confrontations. Piss off or I'll f piss all over you. One of Strummer's most memorable arrests occurred in 1977 when he was caught stealing a pillowcase from a Holiday Inn and had to spend the night in jail. In a more serious incident in 1980, during a concert in Germany, he was arrested for hitting an audience member on the head with his guitar. Do you ascribe any political revolutionary implications to rock? And that's using a fairly narrow definition of politics. Tell me what's your narrow definition? Well, is. I'm cutting out drugs and sex. Uh, well, what are you including? <laughs> in 1965, following a performance, Frank Zappa encountered a man he mistook for a used car salesman. This stranger, however, offered him $100 for a tape recording purportedly of Zappa and his girlfriend having sex. Well, spank me here? Come on, what are you... Are you into that too, huh? No, I'm not into spanking. I love it when you're yeah. froth like that. Facing financial difficulties, Zappa accepted the offer without realizing the man was actually an undercover cop. Upon handing over the tape, Zappa was arrested on a serious charge of conspiracy related to pornography. I don't think that music qualifies as pornography. Eventually, he pleaded no contest in court, and the charge was reduced to a misdemeanor. Zappa served a brief sentence of 10 days in jail as a consequence. Pearl Jam's Eddie Vedder was arrested in the French Quarter of New Orleans on misdemeanor charges of public drunkenness and disturbing the peace. In 1993, Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam was arrested in New Orleans after a bar fight with a waiter, which escalated into a street fight at around 5 a.m. When you guys exit, we're going to beat the shit out of every barefoot person here. The altercation started when the waiter provoked Vedder, leading Vedder to hold him against a wall and spit in his face. Vetter was charged with public drunkenness and disturbing the peace and ended up spending the night behind bars, or at least what was left of it. Might not ever try it again, but it ain't that bad. He was released on a $600 bond, and the charges were eventually dropped. James Brown is behind bars in a South Carolina prison. The South Carolina State Park Correctional Center has the godfather of soul on ice. But tonight, James Brown was sentenced to six years in prison. How did all of this trouble begin? Living in America. James Brown was no stranger to jail. At 16 in 1949, he was convicted of stealing clothes from cars. In 1963, he reportedly brought two shotguns to a concert to target his rival, Joe Tex, resulting in multiple injuries. Brown, on parole, paid his agent to cover it up, avoiding charges. In April 1988, he was arrested for assault and faced drug and weapon charges a month later. His biggest conviction came on September 24, 1988, when he was arrested for brandishing a shotgun and pistol at an insurance seminar in Augusta, Georgia, upset that someone had used his private bathroom. It was you, wasn't it? You took a break in my bathroom, didn't you? After ordering attendees to lock the bathroom and give him the key, he led police on a high-speed chase from Georgia to South Carolina and back. Despite police shooting out his tires, he continued driving on the rims until his vehicle ended up in a ditch. If a man shoot me three or four times and don't kill me, I'm gone. I did it then, I'll do it again. He was charged with assault and battery with intent to kill and sentenced to six and a half years in prison. I, I overreacted to that thing. Brown served 15 months in prison and 10 months in a work release program before being paroled. Ozzy Osbourne is once again the center of controversy. Ozzy Osbourne back in San Antonio. At the height of your addiction, how bad did it get? Bad. I was arrested for attempted murder, Sharon. From spending six weeks in jail at age 17 for stealing clothing from a shop to sell at the local pub, to being arrested and banned from the city of San Antonio for urinating on a memorial at the Alamo, Ozzy Osbourne has had multiple encounters with the law throughout his life. What? And in 1989, Ozzy found himself in jail again, 
this time for a violent incident in which he drunkenly tried to choke his wife, Sharon, while under the influence of drugs and alcohol. You know, we took LSD, we took cocaine, we took vast amounts of uh, marijuana. Sharon recounted that Ozzy entered the room and said, He just said, we've made a decision, and I'm like, we've? Yes, and you've got to die, and I'm like, okay. He lunged on me and, you know, got me down to the floor and started strangling me. When Ozzy woke up in jail, he had no memory of the incident and had to be informed of the reason for his arrest. Sharon eventually dropped the charges. One last thing. If you have any drugs or any alcohol, give me some. Nikki Six, handcuffed and hauled off to jail. I found out that you have had six drug overdoses. Is that why you call yourself Nikki Six? No, but that, oh. that's a good story, though. Oh. Nikki Six of Motley Crue had numerous run-ins with the law, one of which happened while the band were touring in Japan in 1987. When's the show? Just before, before show. the show. Also, I shouldn't tell him what room I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> while traveling on a bullet train from Osaka to Tokyo, Six, while drunk, aimed a bottle of whiskey at Mick Mars. Unfortunately, the bottle missed Mars and hit another passenger on the head instead. Comes crashing down on these nice little Japanese people. You know. When they arrived at Tokyo Station, a large group of police in riot gear were waiting for them and arrested six Tommy Lee and the band's manager, Doc McGee. We pull into Tokyo Station, I see hundreds of these guys in riot stuff. They grab me, throw me to the ground, and then take me and Nikki. As I'm laying there, Tommy Lee says, I can't let you go by yourselves, you and Nikki. I'm gonna clock one, I'll go with you. <laughs> Pow! They were taken to a holding cell and told they would be released if they wrote an apology letter. Six initially resisted, resulting in the three spending several hours in detention before he eventually agreed to write the note. Hi, I'm Vince Neil of Motley Crue. We don't want to lose any of our fans. We want them alive. Come on, New York. If you drink, don't drive. Vincent Neil Wharton was ordered to begin serving a 30-day jail sentence for manslaughter and drunk driving. The tragic incident involving Hanoi Rock's drummer Razzle and Motley Crue's Vince Neil is a significant and somber event in rock history. On December 8, 1984, Vince Neil was driving his sports car while under the influence of alcohol, with Razzle, Nicholas Dingley, as his passenger. The car collided head-on with another vehicle, resulting in the death of Razzle and severe injuries to the occupants of the other car. Vince Neil was subsequently charged with vehicular manslaughter and driving under the influence. He was sentenced to 30 days in jail, five years of probation, and ordered to pay $2.6 million in restitution to the victims. Despite the sentence, Neil served only 15 days in jail due to good behavior. In control of your life at all? Oh, we owe it certain days. What do you like the other days? Uh, drunk. Keith Moon is renowned for his wild escapades in rock history, which have become legendary. These include crashing a car into a swimming pool and using dynamite to blow the doors off his hotel room. Keith Moon had this uh, invention of the light the cherry bomb, work out the, the timing on the fuse, and he'd work out how many stories it could flush down a toilet. And he actually <laughs> blew someone up on a toilet once. <laughs> One notorious incident occurred in 1975 in Scotland when the Who's flight was grounded due to fog. Moon, frustrated, verbally abused airport staff, knocked over a computer, and then took a wheelchair for a reckless ride down a staircase. Adding to the chaos, he brandished a fake gun. This led to his arrest and a night in jail. The following morning, Moon appeared before a judge, paid a fine, and was released. He joked to reporters that the jail stint provided him with the best sleep he'd had in ages. Jim had trouble with voices, you know. He became paranoid. I saw him kind of get deeper into a darker area. None of us knew at that time that he had some problems. Jim Gordon is most famous for his role as the drummer in Derek and the Dominoes, where he contributed to the classic song, Layla. Later in his life, Gordon tragically suffered from schizophrenia. Thought that there were forces that were threatening him. In a disturbing incident, he attacked his 71-year-old mother with a hammer and ultimately killed her with a butcher knife. Gordon attributed his actions to hearing voices instructing him to carry out the crime. He was found guilty and received a sentence of 16 years to life in prison in 1984. 
Gordon passed away in 2023 while still serving his sentence. Marcus the Magnificent Malone. He was a percussionist for Carlos Santana's band. Marcus had gotten arrested and uh, imprisoned for manslaughter. Marcus Malone, Santana's original drummer, played a crucial role in shaping the band's unique Latin rock sound during their early days. However, in 1969, weeks before the band were to play Woodstock, he became involved in a dispute with the husband of a woman he was reportedly involved with. Tragically, this altercation resulted in Malone stabbing the man, who later succumbed to his injuries in the hospital after several days. As a consequence, Malone was convicted of manslaughter and served a three-year prison sentence. After his release in 1973, Malone became homeless on the streets of Oakland. Forty years later, in 2013, he was accidentally discovered by a field reporter, originally reporting on illegal dumping. I did some research on you. Yeah. You the real deal. You, you, you thought I was kidding you? His discovery led him to being reunited with Carlos Santana. That's him, man. That's, that's, that's magnificent Marcus Malone, man, all right. Malone was set to play percussion on Santana 4, but did not appear on the album, with Santana noting his lack of strength and stamina due to years of inactivity. Malone lived out his remaining years in obscurity and passed away in 2021 at the age of 77.